So this is the first in a series of segments we're going to call Did You Know? It's just kind of a quick update on some research, maybe some operational things that have come up. And this one's on cardiac arrest. So let's say you arrive at a cardiac arrest and you placed your AED and you shocked the patient a couple times and you did excellent CPR and your patient has developed a pulse. If you were to press the assess button, would your AED tell you to do CPR on this patient even though he has a pulse? So what do you think, true or false? This one's actually true. The AED has no way to check a pulse. It can't feel for a pulse. It can only check for electrical rhythm. And so if it doesn't see a rhythm that it determines needs to be shocked, it says you tells you to do CPR. It's assuming that you won't have the AED even attached and turned on to a patient with a pulse. So in this case, where you've resuscitated a patient, or if you ended up with a patient who you place the AED and then found out that they did in fact have a pulse, I wouldn't take the pads off, but I'd unplug the pads out of that AED and close the lid, or else that AED is going to continue to prompt you to do CPR on your patient, even though he has a pulse. Hypothermia can be a very serious condition. It can actually cause cardiac arrest. Is it possible that we would intentionally make a patient hypothermic in order to save brain cells after post-arrest? Absolutely. That's the new and up-and-coming therapy. The issue is that a lot of the injury occurs to the heart and particularly the brain as it's being reperfused, as circulation is returning. And if we can cool the brain particularly, we can keep some of that from happening and our patients who have survived will survive neurologically intact. There are several devices out there, several methods out there. FDNY has been using ice saline, running a couple of liters of ice cold saline into their patients uh, when they resuscitate them. There's cooling blankets being used and then there's some cooling collars. I put a picture of one that's out there called the XL collar that's used for therapeutic hypothermia. And if you can follow that link or just Google search for XL hypothermia collar, it's a very interesting uh, device. A couple hundred dollars the last I heard. Removable cold packs. Fairly practical um, for field use. A lot of our focus during cardiac arrest is improving blood flow, making blood move. How in the world could a device between the bag valve and the ET tube, or between the bag valve and the combi tube, that's in the ventilation side, that's a breathing thing. Could that possibly improve blood flow? Well, as it turns out, that's exactly what um, the research and some studies have shown. And there's a device here called the Rescue Pod. It's a small device that goes between the bag valve mask, fits in there, and this goes to either the mask for a very tight mask seal or to the ET tube or combi tube. And you simply ventilate through this device. Um, if you're using a mask, you have to have a very good seal. If you're using a combi tube, you have to have good cuff seal. And what this does, in, in theory, and the research is has proven is that this creates a little bit of negative pressure inside the chest which allows to increase blood flow returning from the brain lowering intracranial pressure and helps to um, improve preload if that's a term that makes sense to you uh, improve the blood flow coming back to the heart helps the heart fill so the theory is that your chest compression pumps blood out of the heart and then your full relaxation your full recoil allows blood to fill back into the heart and this device improves that filling. So what about this? Is it true that a toilet plunger was used to successfully do CPR? As a matter of fact that is true and that led some researchers to look into how that could possibly have been effective and if they were onto something there. And there's a device out there now that's a cousin of the rescue pod called the rescue pump that may provide improved uh, survivals and improved outcomes from cardiac arrest. 
Here's a picture of this device, plunger-like device. Um, this would go on the patient's chest, and then you would place one hand here and one hand here and simply do your regular compressions, but it would allow you to do an active compression and an active relaxation or an active decompression CPR. Again, research is still ongoing. American Heart hasn't signed off on it completely. There have been some trials in the United States. Maybe that's coming towards us. Who knows? The plunger may have actually led to an improvement in cardiac arrest survival. Current CPR standards and the current research tell us that the most important thing that we can do to improve our survivals and improve our outcomes in cardiac arrest are to do very high quality, continuous, uninterrupted compressions. High quality at 100 times a minute with a third to half of the chest depth, with full recoil of the chest, and limited interruptions, no interruptions if possible, um, whether it's for airway management or for pulse checks or for charging defibrillators, limit those interruptions. And so that's the current state, and that's what we believe to be the case today. Down the road? Not so sure. This is a blog site and podcast of very, very interesting stuff on research. Several of us are, are paying close attention to this these days. We've talked to the paramedic class about it. And if you're going to paramedic class in the future or you're in class now, or certainly if you are an ALS provider, some of this stuff may be really interesting. And there's a study um, at the link that is uh, there at the top of the screen, or you can search for it by just going to EMCRIT, um, Google searching for EMCRIT blog, and then uh, it's podcast number 69, and look for um, CPR research. And there are some pig studies going on and some other uh, research that's looking into the possibility in the first three or four minutes of CPR, we might decide to put pauses in, in the future. So you never know. What's true today may not be true tomorrow. Certainly what we're doing today is drastically different than what we did 20 years ago. And this research stuff is very interesting. We wanted to point you to, um, to one of these blogs that we think is, is very, very cool. So EM Crit, if you're interested in this sort of stuff. So that's our Did You Know update for now on cardiac arrest. If you have questions or comments or thoughts, contact us at the Training Bureau. Thanks for listening.